in June of 33, I met uh, a girl by the name of Louise Schaffner, and uh, I liked her immediately, and she liked me. I met her at church, and in uh, June of 34, we got married. June 35, the National Open, the uh, USGA National Open, was at Oakmont, Pennsylvania, a very difficult golf course, and I went, I qualified and went there to play. Well, I didn't drive the ball because I didn't like my driver. The year that we had been married, well, I had bought four drivers. We were staying in a, in a home. We weren't, didn't have the money to stay in a hotel or anything. So I, after dinner that night, I said to her, I said, uh, uh, Honey, I, I need a new, I'm going to have to get another driver. I'm not driving very well. She didn't say anything a minute. She stopped and looked at me and she, and she said, Honey, uh, you know, we've been married a year now, and I haven't had any new clothes, I haven't had a new dress, I haven't had anything, and I understand that, because we haven't been doing very well, you haven't been making any money. But uh, now you've bought four drivers, and now you want another one, which would be five. Now, either one or two things. You don't know what kind of driver you want, or you don't know how to drive. And she didn't say any more. Well, that hit me right between the eyes, and of course, it's exactly right. So I went out to the golf shop, and the pro then was Dutch Leffler, and I asked him if he could, uh, uh, would allow me to go in the back of the shop and get a rasp and work on my driver. And I finally got that face of that driver looking exactly the way that I thought it should look to me. I put a little buzz, a little roll off the toe, a little roll off the heel, and add a little off to it, and I used that driver and only, only about three other in my whole career. That probably was the biggest influence she ever had on me. Uh, she was a wonderful wife, and I forced to live with her. Uh, for she died for 50 years and four months. 1945 was a was a very unusual year for anybody in golf, but especially for me. And the most tournaments ever been one before in a row was four. Well, nobody thought much about it when when it won four, and then they started the press and other people said, "Well, you won four, now can you make it five? You won, and then forced I won five. And then, if you want five, can you make a six, can you make a seven, you know, it goes on like that. And it's amazing, poor golf is very difficult. It's, it's frustrating and everything else, but good golf is easy. Finally, we got to about eight or nine wins in a row. I said to my wife one day when I was getting ready to the course, I said, I'm getting so tired of this, I'd just like to blow up today. I'd, I'd like to get this over with. I'd like, I'm not going to try to lose, but I just hope that I don't play well. And uh, so when they came in that night, she didn't follow very much. They came in that night while she said, well, did you blow up? And I said, yes, I shot 66. So I kept on winning. And the last tournament on the tour that year, 1945, was at Glen Garden, where I'd been a caddy. It was called the Fort Worth Open. And uh, I, I won that tournament. That was the final tournament in 1945. And I wound up by winning $52,511. Don't sound like anything now. But I left the tour August 1946 and moved here where I still live. The thing that I'm really more proud of than any other one thing is the, the uh, as far as golf is concerned, is uh, the fact that I uh, played as consistent as which I did. And I finished the money in 113 consecutive tournaments, which is still a record. And uh, that made me realize uh, one thing about myself and about my golf game that I never gave up. I kept on trying all the time, and I, I really feel that golf-wise, that's the thing that I'm more proud of than anything about my whole career.